guys and welcome back. I am so excited today because I get to bring you a brand that I've wanted to cover for months. The brand is Tikovas and I, you're probably asking yourself, what does a Yankee from Connecticut know about Southern fashion? And the answer is nothing. I don't know anything about Southern fashion, but I do know what you know goes into a well-made shoe. I know about high quality materials. I know it looks good and I know what's comfortable. And luckily these boots really fit all of those things so we're gonna get into it a lot more but let's just start right in the beginning let's give you a little overview of Tacovas as a brand Tecovas is a Texas-based leather company specializing in cowboy boots. However, they've expanded to offer leather bags, leather wallets. They offer both men's and women's cowboy boots. However, we're going to concentrate just on the men's. So women, I, I think that a lot of this stuff will apply to you as well, but we're going to look at the men's boots here. Now, if you're like me, you've probably seen their boots in their incredible photography, in their advertisements on Facebook or Instagram. They just, they really have a way of drawing the eye in. I, I saw those, those ostrich leather boots and I remember thinking, holy moly, those things look awesome with denim. And uh, they, they really do. They pop. They're incredible. Each pair of boots is made in an over 200 step process by hand. These are made in Leon, Mexico, which is basically the leather capital of the world. But as we've discussed before, as long as the quality control is kept in check, the country of origin really doesn't matter. So you could get good quality materials and good quality products out of any country you want, depending on who's making them. There's garbage being made here in the US. So I, I don't think that's a, a really good argument when people say it's gotta be made in the United States because oftentimes if you go into those factories, you'll find a lot of immigrants working there, bringing their years and years of knowledge. So they are a direct to consumer company, which I prefer. I really think that old school retail is dying. I mean, it'll probably always be there in one form or another, especially jewelry and stuff that people really want to put a hand on. But this direct to consumer model really works for you and I, the consumer, because we get to save money. We get the same product or the same level of product for much, much less because they're not paying, you know, resellers and then the retailers and stocking fees, all the stuff that comes with keeping your product in a store somewhere. The direct to consumer model is just great. Now, how do you know that what you're buying isn't complete garbage if you're looking at it online? Well, you check out guys like me who are telling you the real deal. I've never lied. I've never done a sponsored ad. I don't believe in that crap. If you're watching this, that means that you trust my opinion. So I'm going to give it to you straight. And the real deal is that these are are wonderful. I've, I have almost no experience when it comes to cowboy boots, but they're incredibly comfortable. That's probably the first thing I noticed. When I put these on and I had worn them around a bit in my house outside, very, very short periods of time, they were very comfortable but that scene that I did in the beginning we went out and we shot in the woods we shot in the, the city we walked around all day making all those shots and putting that little film together I wore them from the morning until the late afternoon and I without any break-in period and they were so comfortable that I, I could just wear them the rest of the day without a problem that's where I think they really nailed it not only are they really good looking, but they're extremely comfortable. And I don't think that there's any break in period needed with these at all. Uh, I do think that they went with some nice soft leathers, which are, are really, you know, pliable and they work well with your foot. But boy, are these things comfortable They're I'm, I'm totally I, count me as a cowboy boot convert. They're incredibly comfortable. Now, if you're like me and you don't know a lot about Western wear and you go on the Tacova's website, you'll notice that they have two different models of boots. They have the Roper boot and then they have the cowboy boot. What's the difference? Well, I'm here to explain it to you in typical New England terms. I'm sure that somebody down south could probably elaborate much, much more. What we have right here, this is a cowboy boot. You'll notice that it has a taller heel, which is tapered and uh, it's just kind of a higher boot in general. Even the shaft here is taller. There's also some additional tooling on here. This is all hand laid on here. The reason that they have all of this leather work and it's very ornate like that is not just for looks. This also helps to keep that big section of leather stiff and standing up. The last thing you want is these things flopping over. From what I understand, when they're well worn in, that will happen, but they actually have shoe tree like things that stick inside of these to help keep that nice and uh, uh, standing up. But either way, all of that detailing is really there, not only for looks, but to keep it standing up. Now, conversely, 
you have the Roper boot, which is a little bit shorter. This one right here, I think is about 10 inches tall, whereas this one's closer to 12. You'll notice that the heel on this is a lot less. This is about an inch and an eighth heel. This one here, I believe, is about an inch and a half, so a little bit taller. The Roper boot has a block heel, which is basically 90 degrees to the ground. And I really think that if you're somebody who's looking to get into this, but maybe you're a little bit nervous about putting on your first pair of cowboy boots, the Roper is a really good way to go because when you have your jeans down over it, it almost looks like any other kind of laceless boot, like a Chelsea. Uh, you just see the nice sleek lines and you still get that awesome, comfortable feel. You also get the additional height. Having a nice tall, you know, boot heel, a nice stacked leather heel gives you another, you know, maybe inch or so and everybody could use that. So let's talk a little bit about the construction. Now, the construction is basically the same no matter what type of leather you end up getting, but you will see that this has a three-quarter Goodyear welt on it. These are lemon wood pegs, and that's very traditional in Western footwear. And the benefit of having the pegs, actually what happens is they drill a hole, and these are hammered in through the uh, sole into the midsole. The benefit of these lemon wood pegs is that they will swell and contract when they get wet along with the leather so actually they sort of form a more integral part whereas if there's nails here a lot of times those will actually get worked out because they don't expand like your leather will they'll get pushed out because they're a dissimilar material lemon wood pegs this is something that you'll see in almost any good handmade cowboy boot they also have this awesome leather stacked heel which is very very nicely finished and one of the things that I'm really glad they didn't do is they actually gave you a nice thick rubber rubber cap on there. So when you're walking in these, you don't get that click, click, click. And some people like that. You can always add on, you know, a metal base to this if you really, really like that. I mean, you could put some spurs on it if you want to. That's totally up to you. But I like the fact that they don't do that. I mean, there is something nice to having a nice sound of a leather sole, but oftentimes I found that I actually prefer the, the quieter uh, rubber soles. So I'm very, very happy they did that. That also really helps with traction. Although you do not have that here. Here you have the leather sole. So you have sort of a hybrid here, but I think that they've done it very, very well. You'll also notice some really nice tapering here, a little bit of scything that they've done. This is just, you know, when you really turn this boot over and you look at it and you look at the way that they've, they've formed it and you can see the shank and the lemonwood pegs, it's really, really nice. And and if somebody were to hand me this boot and ask me how much I thought it cost, I would guess that it costs a lot more than you can get these for. But again, that's the beauty of the direct-to-consumer model. Let's talk a little bit more about that sole because if you know me, if you know this channel, you know that that's one of the things that I always focus on because that's a place where a lot of companies will cut corners is the inside of the shoe. You can't see it, so sometimes they'll put something in there like an EVA strip, some sort of synthetic material that will over time will compress and you really feel like you're just basically walking on the floor at that point. It's not comfortable at all. What I'm glad to say is that they do have a cork bed lining, which will again, conform to your foot over time, followed up by leather. And on top of that, they've actually put in a comfort insole. So that's where the comfort is coming from. They've already put it in there and it's just really, really nice. You can feel that it's got a lot of nice give to it. Not too much, you know, where it's squishy like a tennis shoe, but They've just nailed the fit, and I know that's one of the things that they focused on. It was worth the time that they put into it because, man, they're comfortable. Now, I am not very familiar with exotic leathers. Most of the time, I'm dealing with steer hide, with cow hide, with horse hide, that kind of thing. But when I decided to go for these boots, I really wanted to go all out. I'm not afraid of being bold, so I wanted to go with something really interesting. That's why I initially really wanted these right here. In this color, this pecan color, this is ostrich. This is full quill ostrich. The upper is made of calf skin. The inside is bovine leather. And you see the same thing over here with this cowboy boot. This is their lizard. Same exact thing over here, calf skin upper and bovine liner. And uh, I mean, man, I, I the first experience that I've had with exotic leathers and I'm blown away. I just love how soft this is. It's soft, but it's tough. It's really pretty interesting uh, to me, especially coming from the world of, you know, you have to break in your boots and that's sort of a sign of how well they're made and, you know, going through that pain period. I was very, very prepared to do that with these, but I didn't have to. Although one word of caution, I totally got stuck in my boots when I put them on the first time. There is a special way you have to put these on and, and I didn't realize that, but they do include a little thing on how to actually put on and take off your boots. 
I couldn't get them off. I ended up wearing them for a few hours <laughs> because I was stuck in my boots. It's hard to grab them. It was these right here. It's hard to grab that and pull your your foot out of there and get it out of this 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 shaft here. I, I was all right. Whatever, guys. You can laugh at me. Go ahead. I was stuck in my boots. Now the price will range depending on which leather you choose. On the lower end for $225, you can get it to a nice cow leather or their suede, which looks awesome. On the very, very high end, we have their Cayman, which is well into the 400s. The ostrich boots that I have are $345, and the lizard come in just under $300. It really depends on which leather you're going for, but still, the construction, the details are all there all very, very nice, and I don't think you can go wrong. I mean, they're all awesome. You just gotta find which one speaks to you. So to wrap this up, these are great boots, a great way to expand your look and, and get into a little bit of uh, something you're probably not used to, something that has some pretty cool history based in American and Mexican culture. Very, very cool. And uh, my whole point with that video in the beginning was to show you how you can use these and how they do look at home in all kinds of different settings. I mean, in the in the city, they look great. They just look really good with jeans in general. So if you're a fan of denim, you like your slim cut denim or or, you know, even straight cut doesn't really matter. These just look great with that. They just they go hand in hand. Please don't wear them with shorts. For the love of God, don't wear them with shorts. So if you're looking at these going, I don't know, can I pull off that look? The answer is yes, you can. You just have to rock them with confidence. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really do appreciate it. I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.